It's great to see you again. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. We, we were just having a discussion about Walmart. I'm, I'm sure you heard and the signal that we're getting there. How, how much of the lowered outlook and the, and the clouds you see on the horizon here are due to the fact that consumers are slowing? Well, part of it is coming from uh, consumers slowing their consumption uh, expenditure pattern. I mean, we're seeing basically three major factors in our downward revision. One is inflation. And inflation works in two ways. First, it's eroding purchasing power. It's uh, hitting the pocketbook. And second, it's also going to lead to uh, uh, further tightening by central banks around the world, including the Federal Reserve here in the U.S. Second, China has not been doing uh, very well in the, second, in the first and second quarters of this year. And so we have a significant revision for, for China. And third, the euro area has been, has been hit uh, uh, in particular by the elevated gas prices and the, the imp impact of the war. And so if you put sure. together the U.S., China, and the euro area slowing down, these are the three largest economies in the world, the global outlook is, is, is you know, revised downward. Now, gloomy, I think, was the word that you used in this report as far as developments this year. Big markdown in the U.S. Wanted to ask you about that. 1.4 percent lower than you expected a few months ago. Do you see... A recession coming in the U.S. this year or next? No, we don't have in our baseline. We don't have a recession in the U.S. We're projecting about 2.3 percent growth in 2022 and a slowdown to about 1 percent in 2023. So it's a significant slowdown here on the back of, as you pointed out, uh, slower cons uh, lower consumption, uh, tighter monetary policy, uh, and, and, and also a decline in consumer confidence going, uh, going forward and the slowdown in the rest of the world. That also has an impact. Uh, but this is, not, this is not a recession, but it brings us closer. Actually, uh, Q4 and Q4 growth in 2023, we're estimating only about 0.6%. And when you're at 0.6%, it only takes a little bit of a bad news to sort of knock you off there. Uh, so it's a, it's a narrowing path to avoid a recession in the U.S., what, especially next year. What even is a recession? Sorry to cut you off, but, like, there's this huge debate now, and, and the White House has been telling us that it's hard to actually have a recession when there's a 3.6 percent unemployment rate. Do, do you define it as two negative quarters of growth or what? That's a technical way of defining a recession. That's the one that a lot of people use, two consecutive quarters of negative growth. But it is correct to point out that in the current environment where you have an employment rate at 3.6 percent and a labor market that is very, very tight, a lot of job openings for every uh, unemployed person, it's hard to sort of look at this and, uh, and, and, and sort of line it up with uh, historical recessions we've had in the past. So recession is sort of a broader slowdown in economic activity uh, that's usually defined after the fact by, in the U.S., by the National Bureau of Economic research, but certainly beyond the definition, when the economy is slowing down, going from you know 2.3 percent to 1 percent next year, uh, that's going to be felt. So, do you think the Fed's making a mistake hiking so hard into a, a sharp slowdown in growth here? Should they stop? Well, our projection right now is for inflation in the U.S. to be uh, around 7.7 percent in this year and, and, and coming down after that. So, you know, you're in an environment where inflation is pushing uh, uh, these very high numbers and it's been quite persistent and it's been broadening. Central banks really don't have a choice. And our, our advice here is that that's the first priority, bringing back price stability, even if it's going to slow down economic activity, might even not be entirely possible to avoid a recession or an increase in unemployment. But it's absolutely absolutely necessary to bring back price stability going forward. That's the bedrock for macroeconomic uh, stability uh, going forward. 